Ryan Zari is one of the best duos that you can be playing in the entire game. Even with the worst DPS on your team, a good Ryan Zari duo can single-handedly have so much impact that they overwhelm all the mistakes their teammates make and they hard carry their team straight to a victory. That being said, in this guide, we're going to be going over the Ryan Zarya Masterclass to teach you everything that you need to know in order to master this powerful combo right away. If you like this series, do me a favor and smash the like button for the YouTube algorithm, as well as tell me down below exactly what are the duos you want me to go over in the future. All that being said, let's just jump right into it, shall we? So first, we're going to break down tips and tricks on both Ryan and Zarya separately and then give you insight on how they should be working together as a comprehensive duo. That being said, the first character we're going to be talking about is the German beefcake himself, Reinhardt. Now, Reinhardt is a frontline tank who wants to decide, engages, and create space with his team. In general, his Zarya is going to be wanting to do damage, make that impact and space creation easier. As a Ryan, this is what you need to be doing. You want to be pushing in, and while you do, you want to be stagger stepping your shield so that you have shield on the front line. I see way too many Reinhards push all the way up to the front line with their shield, and once they get there, they don't have any shield to potentially block shatters, enemy fire, or powerful abilities such as nade. A Ryan needs to be able to have a certain amount of shield health on the front line, and as such, you need to be able to balance your shield health with your base health. And all times as long as you have a certain amount of shield health and some amount of natural cover your healers can always heal you back up but if your shield breaks all together the enemy can push up onto you and potentially kill you and your whole team on top of this you want to balance in swinging in with shielding so you can put the pressure on the enemy build ult charge if your shield breaks besides getting your team shattered which i'll get to in a minute you need your shield to help your team do damage safely and block cooldowns specifically nade is one of the most important ones that you need to block but there's other ones as well such as sleep dart Roadhog Hook, and all kinds of examples that I could list. Now, in general, you're going to be wanting to use your Fire Strike around natural cover so that's harder to dodge and enemies don't see it coming. You want to be able to get consistent amounts of ult charge from your Fire Strike so that you can build fast shatters, which will prevent the enemy from pushing in too aggressively and can punish them if they do so. On top of this, aiming for the enemy Reinhardt is the easiest way to get guaranteed consistent charge because many enemies are going to be playing right behind him and it's going to be hard for the Reinhardt to potentially dodge your Fire Strike. Now, as we said before, build Building shatters is really important because the threat of having a shatter allows you to prevent an enemy Ryan Zarya from being too aggressive into your team and punish them for it. You can get shatters off under these specific conditions. Now, before I break down shatter mastery, go and check out GameLeap.com. Go check it out. Go look around. You'll be really surprised by what we have to offer. One, the enemy shield breaks and they've used both of their bubbles. It is your job to track the Zarya's bubbles. Make sure she doesn't have it. They're on quite a long cooldown, so if she used them recently, she's not going to have it. And it's important because her bubbles can actually block your shatter so you need to track this at all cost and then also if the enemy ryan shields breaks this is all about if you can manage it better and if your zarya or your other teammates are putting constant pressure into the enemy shield but a reinhardt who manages his shield much better will still be able to have shield health even if his team is contributing far less to shield break that is a very important part a good ryan can overcome his teammates mistakes now, moving on to the second thing on the list, it's you can bait an enemy into fire striking and they either misplay when you have a shatter and you just shatter them in response to the fire strike animation, or they don't think you have your shatter because you got in so many really powerful swings in to build up charge and every single one of your fire strikes connected. So you have a shatter far earlier than they think that you have one in their mind. So you can easily shatter the whole enemy team. The third condition for when you hit a shatter off is when you get a cross shatter on a split enemy team. For example, you're facing right at the end enemy Reinhardt, but you see two people off to the side, not directly protected by the Reinhardt shield. You turn and shatter them, but the important thing is you need to then actively block the enemy Ryan shatter. A lot of Ryans will try to counter shatter you after you use your shatter. So if you can get off a shatter on two people to the side, your team and specifically your Zarya, your duo partner Zarya, which I'll get to in a little bit, will focus them down while you're still protecting your Zarya and your team from the counter shatter. Very important to get right or else you could actually turn a cool play into a throw. Now, fourthly, there are other scenarios that are niche, but still likely. Things like comboing your static with the stun ability, Reinhardt's not being aware, you want to flank, or other factors. There are other small niche examples to get shatters off, but those are far too many to cover altogether. The first three are the big ones that you need to get right each and every time for consistency's sake. Now, all that being said, let's move on to Zarya. And Zarya is the damage dealer, peeler, and space creator in conjunction with her Reinhardt. As a Zarya, you want to accomplish two things. Build 
charge so that you can have more overall impact. Azario with high charge does way more damage than Azario with slow charge. This is obvious, but it also directly correlates your impact level. The more charge you have, the more shields you break, the more people you can threaten, and the more you do your job. So it's very important that you build your charge. Now, how do you do this, you might ask? Well, you want to be going in with the cycles of your bubbles. You want to be enabling your Reinhardt to take space, bubbling him while he goes in, telling him when to retreat, and going in yourself and replacing him as you use your self bubble and create a cycle of you going in and going out based on bubble use with your Rhine. Here's the important takeaway. If you're in a duo with a Reinhardt, you as Zarya need to be in active communication with him. A Zarya is almost like the air traffic controller to the plane that is Rhine. I know this is a really bad analogy, but essentially he should follow whatever you tell him to do. When you tell him that it's safe for him to swing in aggressively and you're gonna bubble him, that's what he should do. Right after the bubble, he should start to back up, but you should also relay that information to him and when you're gonna take his place. And then when your bubble dies, he should be taking your place. I'm gonna be getting to that a little bit more later when I talk about these two playing together but the important thing is y'all are in sync with each other it's almost like a back and forth the Ryan goes in the Zara takes his place the Ryan takes her place then they both back up and then they repeat the process it's like a cycle over and over again and it's really important that you correlate this to your Ryan because if you don't and the Ryan goes in when your bubble is on cooldown not only could he get punished for swinging into aggressively by just dying he could also get nade slept hooked or a number of different things that could just shut him down altogether and it greatly affects his play and how he's going to play a certain engagement if he knows he's going to get Get bubble versus knows he's not going to get bubble that's why it's so important to relate to him now to fully understand this ryan and zarya have a symbiotic relationship because they both benefit from what each other wants to do zarya wants consistent cover as well as consistent energy supply which ryan delivers and ryan wants to be able to go in more aggressively to take more space generate more ult charge and just be more of a main tank zarya enables this by protecting him from dangerous cooldowns damage altogether or even cleansing him from things like anti-nade which could potentially shut him down now overall, when you're engaging the enemy team, the first couple engagements are normally a whittling down of resources. You want to be building up your Zarya charge first before you full commit for sure, but there's going to be several waves of going in and backing out, building that precious charge, and trying to find some sort of advantage in ability management. The better you and your Reinhardt are at going in and pulling out consistently with that sort of synergy, the more you practice that synergy, the more likely you'll have high charge while still having abilities in the bank. Your Rhine will have more shield health and more base health. And then when the enemy has low resources while you have high resources, you could take a full engagement. Zara's with pretty high charge should be able to punish any character that wants to be aggressive on your Rhine, including Reapers, McCrees, and Mays. At the very least, force them away or force that cooldowns. It's your job as a Zarya to put in damage into these characters so that your Ryan can basically continue unadulterated. If you fail to do this and you let your Ryan die, not only is it going to throw the team fight, but more likely than not, you're going to get punished yourself as Zarya and you're going to lose all that precious energy you spent so much time building up. It's your job to protect your Ryan in the same way that it's his job to protect you and come in front of you when you are low on bubbles and enemies are trying to punish you. Now in the downtime when enemies aren't pushing in and you're just simply playing the frontline with your Rhine, you should be pressuring away enemy Zarya's and breaking the enemy Rhine shield. We talked about shield advantage in the beginning and a Zarya with really high charge focusing the enemy Rhine shield can put tons of pressure into it, making it that much easier for your Rhine to get off shatters and making it so the enemy Rhine has to pull back that much faster. A better Zarya that's better with the cooldown use will get faster charge and thus put more pressure on the enemy Rhine shields, which also makes it easier for a Rhine to shatter. And a better Rhine will get shatters off and punish the enemy and the other Zarya and have her start from scratch building ultimate charge while you have high energy going into the next fight or at least some semblance of energy, which means that you'll spend less time building up charge as opposed to the enemy Zarya having to go through the initial cycles again, which is even a time where you can punish her because if she wastes both of her bubbles aggressively, that is the go ahead, especially if you have bubble and energy advantage. Now, the last question that you need to ask is when should you go and push all in? I touched on this earlier on, but this is one of the most important things. After you get the cycles down, you need to know when should you all in an enemy? When's the time to be aggressive and push the enemy even when you've been playing this middle fight, this mid fight for a long period of time? You need to be tracking ults together. Ultimates like Shatter, abilities like Nade, and enemy Zarya Bubbles. 
Well, yes, it's really obvious to see you have an advantage if the enemy Ryan Shield broken and both their Zari and their Ryan are at half health. It doesn't always relay the full story. You could see very easily how the enemy Ryan Shield is broken and the Zari is weak, but two bubbles on both of them coupled with the Ryan shatter onto your whole team can turn a team fight when you have a seeming advantage. You need to understand what abilities the enemies have to stop your push that can help you make a more proactive push and a push that's less likely to get punished. If you know that the enemy doesn't have things like shatter, they don't have abilities like nade because you blocked them and the enemy is low on bubbles you can push in aggressively even if you are less in the health department and shield department because in reality you having these abilities edges it into your favor essentially things like shield health base health abilities on both sides and ultimates give you a much better picture of who has the true advantage and on top of that things like speed boost or abilities like maywall or just icing on the cake helping you initiate that much easier although over time if neither side make a play the better Ryan Zarya will almost always come out on top with better ability usage while the enemy's Ryan shield is whittling down time after time and the enemy Zarya is using her bubble to try to supplement for this lack of shield health while you and your Ryan have much more health, much more abilities, and much more charge altogether and that overwhelming advantage can be leveraged to you and your team to potentially win the whole team fight without any plays made at all. All in all, I definitely think Ryan Zarya is one of the most impactful duos that you could play and you and a buddy would be very well off if you pick this combo and learn to master the synergies together. Learning that communication, the cycles of you and Zarya, and what each of your jobs are can definitely help you be more impactful overall and I promise you that if you master this combo, you will gain hundreds and hundreds, maybe even thousands of SR going forward. Speaking of gaining SR, if you want to see more content that's sure to give you more SR over time, definitely go check out GameLeap.com. We got in-depth masterclass guides guaranteed to give you insight, helping you win more and more games. All that being said, if you like this duo masterclass, I'm going to ask you to do a big favor for me. Please smash that like button. Tank content hasn't been doing that well lately, but if you want to see more, please smash that like button as well as tell me any other duos that you want me to break down in the comments down below. As long as this is a series that you want to see, I could do any sort of duo. Again, RFA, Mercy, double DPS combos like Reaper May. There's all sorts of possibilities here, but I definitely need to let you know and hear your insight. Anyways, that's all I have for you today. I'm Coach Mills, and until next time, 